So tonight, I want to share with us very quickly on some of the realities that fasting makes available to us. Yesterday, I remembered share, I remember sharing with us on the blessedness of fasting. And I pointed out a few things to us. Number one, I told us that fasting brings the word of the Lord to us. The proceeding word of the Lord comes to us as we engage in fasting. And we looked at Exodus chapter 34 from verse 28 to 30. And we saw that it was in the place of fasting that the Lord gave commandments to Moses. You see that too. And I also quoted a few other scriptures. Fasting brings the word of the Lord to us. Number two, I told us yesterday that fasting engenders transfiguration. Every time we are fasting, there is a transfiguration we enjoy. You see that also in Exodus 34, verse 29 to 30. When Moses came down from fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible said the face of his skin began to shine. So every time we fast, it transforms and transforms and transfigures us to higher levels of glory. And you see, different phases of your life requires different version of you. There is a version of you that is good enough for where you are now. But the next level you are going to, you need another version of you. For instance, some of us who are here is tied to our destiny for kings and governors and presidents to relate with us and partner with us as touching our vision in destiny. But where we are now, presidents cannot access us because our light has to become brighter for these dimensions to happen. So one of the ways you enjoy engender transfiguration is by fasting. Number three, I said fasting brings strength to our inner man. And I quoted for us from Matthew chapter 4. We saw that from verse 2, Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days and 40 nights. Then the devil came to tempt him. But you see that Jesus was not moved. He stood his ground. Nothing the devil do could bring him down because the spirit was strengthened. The spirit was energized. So many people who fall is often because their spirit man is weak. He said if you faint in the day of trouble, it's because your strength is, is little. One of the ways we build inner strength is by fasting. Number four, I say fasting put pressure upon the prophecies of your life. In Matthew 4, 14, we saw that the Bible said after Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days, he said that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. So the prophecy was there in the spirit realm for over 800 years. The moment Jesus was done fasting, he recalibrated the season and the prophecy that was dormant for over 800 years suddenly was activated. Even Jesus was in his lifetime 30 years old at the time. So he was on earth for 30 years old. The prophecy was not fulfilled. The moment he engaged this fasting and prayer, something happened. Pressure was put on the prophecy for his life and it began to manifest. So I said, fasting activates the prophecies that's on our lives and on our, on our destiny. And then we also saw from 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 8 to verse 10, how that Elijah, the Bible said, after he ate angel's bread, he said he moved for 40 days and 40 nights on the strength of what he had eaten, and he came to the mountain of God. And I said, one thing, that journey you saw in the physical is the journey we embark in the spiritual when we fast. When we fast in the spirit, it brings us to the mountain of God. It brings us to a place of higher intensity of the presence of God. It brings us to a place of higher encounters. That's what fasting does for us literally. So anybody who begins to fast and fast periodically, the presence of God on his life would usually become strong. And number six, I said fasting provokes and triggers rewards, pro triggers favor in our lives. In Esther chapter 4 verse 16, we saw that Esther asked that fasting be declared on her account and that herself was going to fast. And in Esther chapter 5 from verse 1 to 3, we saw that when Esther approached the king, she found favor in the eyes of the king. And the king said to her, whatever you ask, I'll give you, even if it is up to half of my kingdom. Nobody says that. No king on, 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 on goes into such a bargain. No king will bargain his kingdom, half of his kingdom. That's like sharing his kingship and his authority. But there is a level of favor that your life can command and that becomes possible. And we saw that the way Esther activated that that uh, level of favor was because of fasting all of these things i called the blessedness of fasting and i said these are some of the rewards that god gives to us because we read also from matthew chapter 6 from verse 8 where jesus says when we fast we should look up to our heavenly father and he he will reward us openly you see that so god taught us yesterday extensively and elaborately on so many things that we we needed to understand about the subject of fasting and i believe that you have internalized it i believe that you know it now and while you are embarking on this fast you are fasting 
with that consciousness. The consciousness that fasting is provoking a lot of things for you. Matthew chapter 6 verse 18, I beg your pardon. Not Matthew 6, 8. So he, God, some of the rewards that God gives us for fasting and which he does openly are some of the things I've outlined to you. The blessedness of fasting. These were the things we looked at yesterday. Tonight, I want to share again very briefly with us on some of the realities that begins to take place when we engage in fasting. There are many things that begin to happen in and around us whenever we begin to fast. And this is also one of the major reasons why fasting is very important. And you would need this if you would journey with God and journey and end well and end strong and finish strong. One of the things, one of the things that will help you to finish strong is a fasted life. And the reason that's possible are some of these realities that fasting makes available that I'm going to be sharing with us tonight. Every man who is doing well in life and ministry and every man who would ever finish strong lived the fasted life. I can assure you, I've read so many books about so many great men in the kingdom. And I can tell you, this is one of the things that is common to all of them. Fasting and a fasted life. And so there are certain realities that fasting introduces into your ecosystem. And these are some of the things I'll be pointing out. And I'll just share four of them with you very quickly. Number one, fasting enhances your consciousness. Your consciousness of God, your consciousness of the things of the Spirit, your consciousness of your ordination. Listen, many persons have a very great destiny, but they are not conscious of their destiny. They are not conscious of God. They are not conscious of the things that are made available to them. And the good news is that God has made great and marvelous things available to us. In Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, he said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. He said, they are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a hope and a future or give you an expected end as the King James will put it. So God has prepared a very beautiful life for us. God has prepared a very, you know, fulfilled life for us even before we were born but you see for you to enter into that life there's got to be a consciousness because consciousness powers everything in this kingdom i give you certain instances from scriptures number one in jeremiah chapter one from verse verse five to verse six god was speaking to jeremiah and in order to help his consciousness god began to tell him a few things and this is what god said he said before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee before thou camest forth from the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee to be a prophet to the nations. Because Jeremiah was being trained by a priest and he probably would have ended his life as a priest. But God wanted to give him a consciousness that you are not a priest, you are a prophet. And that was why God taught him this. If you study also in the life of Abraham, God tried so hard to get Abraham to believe. God tried so hard to get Abraham to receive the blessing, but Abraham could not receive it because it was not registered in his consciousness. And so God took him out and told him to look into the heavens and number the stars. He said, if he's able to do that, he said, that's the number of multitude that he will give to him as offspring. The moment that happened, the Bible said, and Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. I think that's Genesis chapter 15 verse 5 and 6. You see, the moment consciousness was activated, he said, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. It was counted to him for righteousness. He could not believe until God showed him. If you see verse 5 of that scripture, God took him out and showed him the stars. So consciousness is too important in the delivery of our destiny, in the delivery of our ordination, in the delivery of our purpose. And there are many ways to achieve consciousness. For example, Paul was teaching in Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to verse 2. He said, if you say you are risen with Christ, he said, Set, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So you build consciousness by seeking. Number two, he said, set your affection on the things above and not the things of earth. So when you set your emotion on things, you can form a consciousness. And that consciousness becomes the power that bets the things that are available to you. Like Philemon chapter 1 verse 6 will put it. He said that the communication of your faith becomes effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you. So consciousness is very important. The power of God flows through consciousness. And consciousness is one of the channels through which your ordination is delivered to you. What you are not conscious of, you cannot have. Now, this is why fasting becomes very important. Because one of the things fasting does for you is that fasting enhances your consciousness about God, about your ordination, about God's plan, about God's will for your life. So anybody who is not fasting and fasting periodically may not be very 
good in in building the right consciousness and so many things may be available to him but he may never experience it acts chapter 10 from verse 9 to verse 11 let's see what happened to peter in this scripture something happened to peter and it was so beautiful he said on the morrow as they went on their journey talking about the messengers that came from cornelius he said they drew nigh unto the city and he said peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour and he said in verse 10 and he became very hungry and would have eaten he said but while they made ready he fell into a trance so peter was in a fasting mode he had not eaten and he was hungry and famished like every one of us who is fasting today hungry and famished but there is something in addition to that hunger there is a possibility of activated consciousness and we saw that as peter fell he fell into a trance he didn't sleep he went into a trance and he began to see realities from the heavenly realm this is what fasting does for you especially when you do it correctly and i'm going to teach you how to fast i'm going to teach you the different kinds of fasting different days when we get to meet but this point i'm raising is to help us sustain and align so that we can make the most of this fasting and the first thing i want you to know is that fasting builds your consciousness fasting helps to enhance your consciousness and because fasting enhances your consciousness you must be conscious of what you pay your attention to while you are fasting and i'm going to round up with that so i don't double into it that's why there is there are certain things you surround yourself with when you are fasting because you have a heightened consciousness when you are fasting there are many people who have fasted and collided with demons there are many people who have fasted and collided with wrong spirits because they don't know that fasting enhances their consciousness if you know that fasting enhances your consciousness you will be deliberate about what you surround yourself with when you fast and you'll be deliberate about what you engage yourself in when you fast and i'm going to round up with what you engage yourself with when you fast because fasting enhances your consciousness number two fasting stirs up power in you for the miraculous largely everybody that experiences miracles or works in the miraculous is a student of fasting one of the fastest way of stirring power for the miraculous is when you indulge and engage periodically in fasting in Matthew 17 verse 17 to verse 21 I want us to read this scripture and so you see what Jesus pointed out to his disciples now before this time Jesus gave them power in Matthew 10 to go out and cast out devils and they went out and cast out devils but they were not yet established in the miraculous and so on another occasion which is Matthew 17 Jesus went up to the mountain to pray. If you study verse 2 to verse 3, you see that Jesus took his disciples to pray. Now, the other disciples that were left, nine of them, at the foot of the mountain, a man brought his child that was deaf and dumb and epileptic and asked them to cast out the demons. And so they just strode and said, ah, come on, we've casted out demons before. That's not a big deal. And when they attempted to, the demon pounced on them and would not go. And the father did not make it easy. The moment Jesus descended from the mountain, imagine that the guy waited and Jesus came and he spoke openly where everybody was and said, I brought my son who is thoroughly vexed with demon and your disciples could not cast him out. Can you imagine? And Jesus turned to them and rebuked them openly. He said, then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? He said, bring hither to me. Bring him hither to me. So you see that God is not happy when we don't walk in the miraculous. In Mark 16 verse 17, he said, this sign shall stop on for several hours. Suddenly respond, responded immediately. Because Jesus came with the power for the miraculous. Now, in verse 19, you see what the disciples now said. The Bible said, then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus began to respond. And there were two answers Jesus gave them. He said, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. He said, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder, to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. If you have faith, he said, nothing shall be impossible to you. Many have faith. But this is the second thing Jesus added. And this is why many people who have faith struggle. He said, how be it? This kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. 
How be it? This kind go not out but by prayer and fasting. So you may have faith and there are certain things you struggle with if you don't add fasting to it. So one of the greatest insurances for a life of miracles is the life of fasting and prayers. They knew this from the Old Testament. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3 and verse 20 to 22, you are going to see how the children of Israel activated the portals of miracles to engender deliverance to the whole nation. He said, and Jehoshaphat feared. Now, three nations ganged up against them. Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. And the Bible said, Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judea. These guys knew that one of the keys to the miraculous was fasting. After they carried out this fast, in verse 20, see the outcome, verse 20 to verse 22. And he said, And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And they went forth. See the man that was afraid. Now fasting has engendered something. He said, And Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe in his prophet, so shall ye prosper. Now you are seeing that this man who was afraid had, had faith. But you see, that faith was immobilized. After he fasted, a prophetic word came. Now faith has been activated. And in verse 21, see what he said. And when they had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his best is endured forever. Now that they have fasted, anything they do will work. How can you be going to war singing when others are carrying bows and arrows? Because they had concluded the matter on the altar of fasting and prayer. And in verse 22, see where the miracle is. And he said, and they went and began to sing and to praise. To praise. And he said, the Lord set an ambushment among the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. And they were smitten. You see, so there was a miracle waiting. But before this miracle, there was fear. There was prophecy. There was faith. But they could not arrive at any of these things except as they fasted. The moment they fasted, fear was cast out. The prophetic word came. Faith was activated. And finally, the miracle took place. Many Christians are not fasting. That's why their lives are completely barren of miracles. The moment you start fasting, the miraculous becomes a normal part of your life. So the second reality fasting brings into your ecosystem is the possibility for a miraculous life. The first is an enhanced consciousness. The second is the possibility of a miraculous life. Try what I'm telling you. As we fast, if you are consistent for the next 30 days, you will be shocked the things that will happen to you. Not even because I'm praying. The prayer I'm praying is to help somebody's faith, is to minister to somebody who probably needs a touch of God and it might be an emergency and all of that. But if you continue this fast and you follow what I'm teaching you, by the time we get to 30 days, you'll be shocked that embargoes of yesteryears would have ended. You'll be shocked that sicknesses would have gone. You'll be shocked that you would have been promoted many times in one month because fasting activates the miraculous. Number three, fasting engenders repentance and natural responses to repentance. When the people fast, they repent and they are easily predisposed to repent. See this fleshly human tendencies that makes it difficult for people to accept or take responsibility for what they've done and they are trying to look for their way out and irritates God. It is dealt with when you begin to fast. In fact, even naturally speaking, when you start fasting, you discover that your human propensities are weighed down. They are reduced. There's a lot of secret about fasting. Even talk. Talk. You discover that your talking will be reduced. And in the multitude of wars, there is sin. The reason many people are not powerful is because they diffuse power with talking. Power diffuse it. Power is diffused through talking. So when a man begins to fast, you see that it becomes easy for him to deal with the flesh and to repent. I'm not saying you deal with your body. I'm talking about the flesh. And it's because of some of these things I've already shared. As you become more sensitive of heaven, the presence of God begins to walk in you. And you discover that you become more aware of heavenly realities. And so it's the resources from heaven that flows through you that helps you to tame 
the possibilities of flesh and to begin to repent. Not the hunger necessarily. The hunger deals with your body, but while your body is suppressed, your sensitivity is awoken. And so God can talk and flow through you very easily. Jonah chapter 3, verse 4 to verse 9. You see what happened to the people of Nineveh. Jonah chapter 3, verse 4 to verse 9. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lord. I'm showing you these things. These are powerful truths in scripture that you must know. He said, and Jonah began to enter into the city, a day's journey. And he cried and said, yet 40 days, Nineveh shall be overthrown. He brought the judgment of God. But look at what happened. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. Look at verse 6 and see what happened. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid his robe from him and covered himself with sackcloth and ashes. Verse 7. And he, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, head nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Verse 8. He said, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto the Lord. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Verse 9. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? So fasting helps you to genuinely repent. And fasting also, as God sees that you repent, it makes it easy for God to change his mind as touching his judgment. Are you seeing these things? Now, let me correct something quick. The Bible said, the Lord our God changeth not. So when I say God changing his mind, it's not that God fluctuates. That's not the point. If you remain in sin, God will judge. If you become righteous, God's righteous nature is to bless. Are you seeing the difference? So it's not like God is changing. God is constant in his dealing. He will constantly judge the sinner and he will constantly bless and reward the righteous. So if you are on the side of sin, God is judgment. If you are on the side of righteousness, God is reward and blessing. So when they change, it's not like God really changed. God is constant to judge sinners and God is at the same time constant to bless and to reward the righteous. So when you become righteous, you deal with the righteous judge that blesses and rewards the righteous. Are you seeing that? So the point I'm making here, I think it's clear enough, but fasting helps you to genuinely repent. Many times people say, I'm sorry. They are not. Many times people tell you, please forgive me. They don't mean it. The moment you turn your back, they start laughing. But when you see somebody who says, I'm sorry, especially in his dealing with God, and he begins to fast, even if he was pretending, before that fasting is over, he will have an encounter that will make him repent. Before that fasting is over, the word of the Lord will come to him and convict him. So fasting helps to trigger genuine repentance. And if you will finish strong your race, you must be somebody who repents and repents again. Keep aligning and realigning with God. Because the reason many fail is that as they are joining in the path of destiny, at some point they deviate, take an angular shift. And that angular shift may be very small when they deviated. It could be one degree. When they journey for 10 years, it will become too wide that you may not even be able to calculate it anymore. Because the farther, the wider. It was one degree at the point of origin, but at destination, it can be two different worlds. So what fasting does is to help you to repent so that you keep realigning to God in order to keep sync with the Holy Spirit. That's why you will finish strong. And finally tonight, Fasting engenders fruitfulness and a fruitful endeavor. Everybody who fasts is fruitful in matters of destiny. In Acts 13, from verse, verse 1 to verse 3, we hear a very interesting story about the church in Antioch. The Bible says certain prophets and teachers, such as Barnabas, Simeon, which was called Nigel, Lucius of Cyrene, Manin, which had been brought up by Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, he said, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. He said, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me Paul, Paul, uh, Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And he said in verse 3, when they had fasted 
and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them forth. So the origin, the, the origin of Paul's fruitfulness in ministry is fasting and ministering to the Lord. This was where the Holy Ghost separate, separated them. This was where they were commissioned. And when they went forth, all their lives, they were fruitful. They were productive. And this is why when you study the scripture, you are going to see this consistent pattern. Everybody who was productive and fruitful was a fasted person. Moses fasted for 40 days. His ministry is eternally established to date. Paul fasted for many years. Here and also when he went to Samaria, you know, his testimony remained to today. And then you have Jesus, our Lord, who was always fasting and even fasted for 40 days. And today, Christianity is blossoming. So if you want a fruitful and profitable life, you must make past fasting part of your daily life. These are four major realities that fasting brings into our lives that makes us become effective. Number one, it enhances our consciousness. So we are not living like mere mortars. We are picking signals from heaven and on the strength of that signals, we are making our progress in life. Number two, it stirs an atmosphere for the miraculous. So the power to cause changes are activated by fasting. Number three, it helps to engender and provoke genuine repentance. So every time we fail or we miss the mark, the state of brokenness required in order to repent and to realign with God is engendered. And number four, it makes for profitable and productive living. Profitable and productive living. So when you find people who are always making progress, they are always fasting and seeking God. Okay, let me just add one more um, because somebody may be asking, what if you fail? Is there a possibility of coming back on account of fasting? Yes, fasting also provokes restoration. In Joel chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, hear what the Bible says as touching God's restorative plan. It said, tell your children of it and let our children tell their children and let their children to another generation. Go to the next verse. And it said, that which the palmer worm had left, the locust had left, that which the locust had left, that which the canker worm had eaten, that which the canker worm had left, that which the caterpillar worm had eaten, all these things that were eaten up, they are restored because he said to proclaim a fast and to call for a solemn assembly. Proclaim a fast. You see that two times in this same scripture. Call for a solemn assembly. So it doesn't matter what the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar worm has eaten. When you engage God fruitfully in a fast, you discover that God, you see that also in verse 2, that in chapter 2, that God begins to engender restoration. In fact, this is one of the major things we find in the book of Joel. Proclaim a fast. Call for a solemn, solemn assembly. And then the next thing, what the palmer worm had eaten, what the canker worm had eaten, what the caterpillar worm had eaten, I will restore. So one of the things you see fasting doing is to provoke and engender restoration. Because of our time, what do you do in order to make your fast effective and productive? Seeing that fasting heightens your consciousness, how can you fast so that you don't collide with the demon? Because when you are conscious, you are like an antenna. You can pick strange frequencies as well. What do you do when power is being stirred in order to stay in alignment? There are five major things every believer who is involved in fasting should actively engage in. Number one is prayers. When you are fasting and you are praying, your fasting will be productive and it will guide you only to the realm of God. Acts chapter 10 from verse 30, you are going to see the beauty of the necessity of fasting and praying. This was Cornelius speaking. Of course, if you read from verse 1 to verse 5, you are going to see his encounter. But he summarized it here in Acts 10, verse 30. He said, And Cornelius said, Four days ago, as I was fasting until this hour, and at, at that hour I prayed in my house. So he was not just fasting from food. He was not just fasting from internet. And I said, I'm going to teach you the different types of fasting. But whatever you think fasting is here, so long as there's abstinence of some sort. He said, as I was fasting and I prayed, he said, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. In verse 3 and 4 of this same scripture, we know that was an angel. So if you want to fast and fast to stay in the realm of God, within the boundary of safety and to be productive, you must make sure that you add prayer to your fasting. And so in verse 3, you see that 
that bright man was actually an angel of the Lord. Many people are fasting and they are not praying. They fast from morning to night. They are hungry of food. They are not eating food, but they are gisting with everybody. They are watching movies. They are doing all kinds of distraction. It's a dangerous thing to do because you are highly sensitive. This is why some people fast and they pick up addictions like masturbation. They pick up addictions like pornography because the spirit is sensitive. You are floating like an antenna. Some fast and they fall into immorality. Some fast and they, they, they encounter demons because they are not praying. They are not guarding their soul. They are, not, they, are not, they are not programming their navigations in the spirit. It's when you start praying that the Holy Ghost brings the needed covering. So when you are fasting, you've got to spend time in prayer. Number two, when you fast, you must learn to guide your affection. Put your affection under watch. The season of fasting is not the season of allowing your emotions and affections to be let loose. Because you know, I told you already, that fasting generates power. So there is enough power for anything you deploy your emotion to. You will do it to a, a high degree and propensity. This is why jo when, when Paul was teaching in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 from verse 5, he said something about our appetite, sexual appetite. He said, defraud ye not one another, except with consent for a time, that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again that satan tempt you not for incontinency so this is what paul was saying he said when you are fasting talk to your wife talk to your husband have an agreement to separate yourself for that period so that you can spend time with god this is even for married people he said two things he said they're very instructive number one talk to your wife let it, I'll talk to your husband. Let it not be as if you are defrauding one another or denying one another of their rights over each of your bodies. He says so that there's an agreement and understanding. Otherwise, the devil will capitalize on it. Number two, he said when the fasting is over, you come back together. So there was a point he was making here that for those who are married, who have legitimate reason why their emotions should be allowed expression, he said those ones should have an agreement so that they still don't allow their emotions in the time of fasting. And he said, for those who are not, they have to. Because he says, if your emotion is not tamed here, Satan can have an advantage. So there are two ways Satan can have an advantage here. Number one, either in your disagreement to cause crisis or when your emotions are not tamed. So when you are fasting, that's not the time to let your emotions lose. When you are fasting, that's a time to monitor your emotions. Because many people expose themselves with, to all kinds of things. Because they don't know that they are generating power. They don't know that they are generating spiritual energy. And the moment they channel their emotion in the wrong direction, the power flows in that direction. And they find that they are doing a lot of dangerous things. You know, the electricity that you use to cook, the electricity that you use for light can kill. So when you release that power that is coming out of your spirit, and you are in the wrong direction, you will move on a very high propensity. And you see that you would have caused a lot of damage to yourself. This is why many people do a lot of damage under the anointing. Because they are not tamed. And when that energy, that strong voltage of God is upon them, they act foolishly or they do something destructive. Some people destroy people's destiny under the anointing. They release causes, they release all kinds of things because they are not tamed. So it's important that now that we are building power, building energy in fasting, our emotions are tamed if you want to be productive in this fast. This is why for those of you who cannot guide yourself on what you watch, you have to shut down a lot of apps. You have to delete a lot of apps from your phone. You have to put a rule around yourself on how you access because this is a sensitive season. Your frequency is high and power is being generated. The third thing to do when you are fasting is to do good. Be involved in charity. Be involved in philanthropy. Be kind-hearted to people. This is supposed to be your lifestyle. But over and above everything, now that you are fasting, you do it more. In Isaiah chapter 58, verse 6 to verse 8, God was talking about the kind of fasting that pleases him. The kind of fasting that he is interested in. And here is what God said. He said, is this not the fast that I have chosen to lose the bands of the wicked? to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free, 
that ye break every yoke. So God is saying, when you are fasting, it's time to do good. He says, is this not to deal thy bread? To, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out of thy out out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, naked that thou cover them, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh? In verse eight. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. That's why I told you fasting produces inspiration. He said, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy help shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. So for you to enter into the blessings and the benefit of fasting, you must guard and shield your fasting with good and charitable lifestyle. Because many people are fasting, they are still wicked. They are still callous to people. They are still oppressing people. They are not benevolent to people. They are not nice to people. And their faces are locked up. They are in the spirit. God said, I've not called for that kind of fast. He said, when you are fasting, be good to the people. Help the oppressed. Help the helpless. If you are good, that's beautiful. This is the time to even be better. Do the best you can now to be a blessing to someone. Number four, when you are fasting and you want your fasting to be effective, don't try to make a show of it. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 and 18, Jesus frowned at it. He rebuked the Pharisees for doing it. He said, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. He said, For they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. So when you are fasting, it's not about a show. There are some people, any little spiritual exercise they are doing, they want the whole world to clap for them. They are wasting their time. Jesus said they have their reward. If they are praying, they want everybody to know they are praying. If they are fasting, they want everybody to know because there is something in them that will not rest until men clap hands for them. And Jesus said that hands, they clap for you. That praise, that applause they give you is your reward. This is why many pray, many fast, but they never become great in the kingdom because the reward that should have come in form of of upgrade of grading of God of anointings of lifting of honor they received it as hand clap so Jesus is saying when you are fasting don't make a show of it now we are doing a congregational fast now we have to announce it for everybody if we don't announce it how would they fast so what God is saying necessarily is not to to hide and no if you are doing a personal fast of course that's good you can nobody needs to know you are fasting unless for legitimate reasons they have to but if you are doing a congregational fast, you have no choice but to tell the people so they can join. If I don't announce it, you cannot join. However, we mustn't make a show of it that, oh, we are fasting, we are spiritual people. We are... No, the moment people start praising you, you are doing something wrong. And Jesus said, you have your rewards. And finally, when you fast, make sure you study. Make sure you read the word of God so that the word of God will create a boundary of insurance. The reason many people spiral into error is because they don't have a word foundation and because they are not spending time with the word. It's a dangerous thing for your sensitivity to be heightened when you are not within scripture. This is why many people drift into heresies. This is why many people enter, some become mad and all kinds of things happen to them because the devil will come. Remember, when Jesus was fasting, it was not angels that came first. Angels came later. It was the devil that came first. The devil engaged him three times. Angels engaged him once. That's why you've got to be careful. And what did Jesus have that saved him? It is written. It is written. Matthew chapter 4 from verse 1 to 9. If you look at verse 3, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, man shall not live by bread alone, project it, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You now go to verse 5, I, I think, the devil came again. He took him to the holy city and set him at the pinnacle of the temple. See what he says in verse, said in verse 6. He said, set and said unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their, in their way that they shall bear thee, lest you hurt, you dash thy feet against a stone. So he is already averting the scripture but Jesus knew the word of God very well and Jesus said unto him it is written thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God and then you go to verse 8 and verse 9 the same tempter taketh him up 
to exceeding high mountain and show him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said bow down to me and I shall give it to you and Jesus responded again so you've got to be careful every time you are fasting make sure you have the Word of God study the word meditate on the word read the word talk the word to yourself because most times the devil will come because every time you are fasting the devil knows you are doing a serious business you are seeking something and that's the best time for negotiation because you'll be vulnerable when you are seeking when you are desiring when you are searching when you are looking for something so the devil brings offers but if you stay with the word all of the tantrums of the devil won't distract you look at verse 9 of that scripture and verse 10 of Matthew chapter 4 after the devil did everything he wanted to do go to verse 10 you will now see what eventually happened Jesus said to him get thee hence Satan for it is written thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him alone shall thou serve go to verse 11 then the devil leaveth him and behold angels came and ministered to him so angels came after the devil left so if Jesus did not have it is written he would have fallen before the angels came. And if Jesus had to use it is written, you too must have to use it is written. Now, is this supposed to scare us from fasting? No. Fasting is God's channel for our development. And like I've said, there are too many numerous benefits to it, but there are insurance systems that must be put in place. Prayer, one of them. Study, one of them. Doing good and being philanthropistic is another. Um, guiding your affections and your emotions is another and try not to make a show is another if you do this your fasting will be most profitable your fasting will be will be a blessing not just to you but to everyone that god will eventually bring your way i am persuaded that beyond the answers that god will be giving to us in the course of this fasting most of us are going to grow into everything i've shared remember yesterday i told you fasting causes the word of the lord to come to you I told you, fasting causes you to enjoy transfigurations and transformation. I told you, fasting strengthens your inner man. I told you, fasting activates prophecies over your life. I told you, fasting causes you to come into God's presence and to build up in God's presence. And I told you, fasting engenders favor. Today, I'm telling you again that fasting will help heighten your consciousness of God, of your ordination, and of the things God has made available to you. I also told you that fasting activates power for the miraculous. I also told you today again that fasting would trigger repentance and the hard posture of repentance. I told you fasting will empower you for profitable living. And I also told you fasting will engender restoration. The blessings of fasting are too numerous. And all of these, I believe and I'm persuaded, will become what many and most of you will enjoy in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is already so much power here because of the level of consciousness we are operating in now because of the power being generated on our inside. And so in the next one minute, I want you to make a demand. Yesterday I was flowing by word of knowledge. I don't need to call your cases before God touches you. You are fasting or you are part of this prayer. You are already part of the corporate atmosphere. I want you in your heart where you are seated watching me tonight. Just make a request unto the Lord and I will make a declaration there will be numerous answers between now and the next 24 hours and for some of you before this week is over you are going to receive double of what you have asked the Lord for can you go ahead and make that request now in the next one minute while you are praying in the Holy Spirit just make a request to the Lord now you've received the word of the Lord now God is about to touch you and to minister to you by his spirit wherever you are the three testimonies we shared tonight before we began one of them was from rwanda another was from cameroon so there are people from different nations and the other was from japan so there are people from all around the world you don't need to be in this studio wherever you are connected now we are already one in the spirit the energy and the power for miracles has already been built up as the word was being shared the life of god was being communicated the power of god was being communicated and healings are going to be taking place tonight every healing that we've recorded already we are going to have them multiplied and even the ones we've not seen they are going to take place people with ear conditions are going to be healed instantly people with eye conditions are going to be healed instantly people with tumors in their body from cancer to all kinds of growths they will vanish tonight 
pains will leave people. Afflictions will leave people. People suffering from arthritis, they'll be healed this very hour. And some persons who can't even walk, some who have organ infections like kidney, like liver, like lung, they'll be healed. And that's not all God will be doing tonight. Even circumstantial issues, people who are in debt, you have borrowed money, you don't know how to pay back. Miraculously, God will cause funds to come to you through men, through system. Something will happen. There will be a spiritual connection that will cause resources to come to you. Some of you doors have been shut against you. You have applied to go to nations that God is sending you to. For many years, visas are denied. That door will open here in the name of the Lord Jesus. There are some of you hearing me right now as I'm talking. There are many promotions that you have qualified for, but it has not happened. There are some of you, your monies are hanging. Companies, institutions, individuals are owing you money. They have not paid them. Before this week is over, there will be many, many, many testimonies. As you are making those requests, I decree now, as a priest of God, I decree as one sent of God to a generation, in the name of the Lord Jesus, all your petitions are answered now. I decree by the power of the Holy Ghost, everyone listening now, your faith is producing results. Every petition you have raised, I decree it is answered now in the name of Jesus. He said, weeping may endure for the night. He said, but joy comes in the morning. He said, our light affliction are but for a moment. If it exceeds a moment, it's too long. If you have suffered that sickness for more than a moment, I decree right now that you are hearing me. In the name of Jesus, every devil responsible for sickness, they check out of your body now. I break the chains of sickness. I release the power for healing right now. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. I command growths in the body to leave. I command muscular disorder to go. I command arthritis pains to go. I command growths in the body. Be gone in the name of Jesus. I command ear conditions, eye conditions right now be healed in the name of Jesus. I command breath, issues that have to do with breath with your lungs, people suffering from breathing, struggling with breathing, asthmatic patients, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that demon. I losing your lung right now. Breathe normally. Be healed in the name of Jesus. People that have ulcers, ulcers in their legs, wounds that are not healing, ulcers in any part of their body, in their intestine. In the name of Jesus, I command healing now. Receive your healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. There are people who are mentally disturbed. Some have mental illnesses. They forget issues. Some panic. Some are suffering from hypertension. Some are suffering from madness. In the name of Jesus, every yoke of sickness on your mind, I rebuke it now. I curse it to its root. In the name of Jesus, some have issues with their blood, blood, their blood vessels, their blood stream, and it's causing a lot of issues, damages. I rebuke those sicknesses in the name of Jesus. The Lord is telling me now some people who are suffering from overweight obese people who are struggling with obesity there's so much growth they are just overweight they can't do nothing they are struggling with breathing organs are choking i command your body to begin to shrink i command that excess weight to be shed off now in the name of jesus somebody is suffering from an ulcer they want to amputate your leg legs be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus, God is telling me now he's touching organ infections, kidneys, livers, lungs. I command every infirmity, be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. It doesn't matter what you have. You are suffering from toothache. That pain is gone now. You are healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody is suffering a heart condition, so much palpitation. In fact, for the past eight to seven months, seven to eight months, you've had these pains. You can't breathe. You can't even leap. I rebuke that infirmity. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus. And if there be anybody here standing for a loved one or a family member, I release right now the healing power. Receive your healing. Receive your healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. He said, when the Lord shall turn again the captivity of Zion, he said, we're like them that dream dream. He said, then will our mouth be filled with laughter. I decree by the power of the Holy Spirit, let your mouth be filled with laughter in the name of the Lord Jesus. There is somebody who was, who was, who was swindled. Your money was, you entered the contract with someone and he, because he's stronger than you, he took your money and is trying to oppress you, refusing for you to have it. 
I decree right now that person comes under pressure. That money is released in the name of the Lord Jesus. And everyone listening to me, your money is hanging with one company, with one organization, with one government. In the name of Jesus, it is released now. It is released now in the name of the Lord Jesus. And if there be anyone here whom success and prosperity is tied by powers of witchcraft and embargoes have been placed on you, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. He said, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimonies. I decree right now by the testimony of Scripture and by the authority in the name of the Lord Jesus, you are free from every affliction. You are free from every oppression. You are free from every stagnation. Go forward and prosper. In Jesus' precious name, I have declared. Thank you, Abba Father. It's a new season for someone. Doors are opening. Doors. I'm hearing testimonies of open doors. Testimonies of promotions. Testimonies of increase. Somebody is receiving multiplication of resources. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. It's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new season. Tell yourself it's my new season. My season of blessings. My season of upliftment. My season of promotion. My season of health. My season of power. In the name of Jesus. It is so. I decree it by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed. You are prosperous. You are fruitful. You are subduing. You are taking over. You have dominion. Walk in that dominion. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Congratulations. 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 Healings are taking place now. Those of you who have ear conditions, check it. You are healed. Those who couldn't see, begin to check. Healings are taking place now. You had growth in your body. Check it. It is gone. Congratulations. People are receiving phone calls and they will keep receiving phone calls of blessings, blessings, finances, monies held up are being released in the spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Miracles are taking place. We decree it shall to be so in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. From wherever you are all around the world, the phone numbers are displayed on the screen. Quickly send your testimony. You have an instant testimony. Send it in. Do a one-minute video, send it in, let's celebrate what God is doing.